Hi everyone, I'm John from Radford Mathematics, and in this video on circle theorems, we're going to be talking about cyclic quadrilaterals. More specifically, we're going to be using the fact that the opposite interior angles of a cyclic quadrilateral are supplementary, meaning they add up to 180 degrees. Now what I'll start by doing in this video is summarizing the rule or theorem I just gave you. And I'll do that by illustrating things carefully. In particular, I want to make sure that everyone's on board with what a cyclic quadrilateral actually is. Once that's done, we'll work through two examples in which we'll need to use our knowledge of cyclic quadrilaterals and their opposite interior angles. So let's get started. Looking at the screen here, you can see that I've placed three circles. And for the moment, it looks a little messy, but here's the idea. I'm going to use the empty circle you see here to illustrate what cyclic quadrilaterals are, as well as what this rule actually tells us. Once that's done, the other two circles you see here are the examples I'm going to be working through. And in fact, I could label those right now. The bottom circle here will be example one, and this circle over here will be example two. Okay, now consider the circle you see here. And let's say I place four points on its circumference. And those four points can be anywhere. So I'll place one here, another one here, another one here, and I'll place the fourth one here. Now, if I create a path by joining these four points which are placed on the circumference of this circle, it creates what we call a cyclic quadrilateral. And so if I draw that, it would look something like this. I've got this cord here, this one at the top here, this cord that shoots downwards, and finally the last one right here. Okay, now the rule that I stated in the introduction was that Opposite interior angles of a cyclic quadrilateral are supplementary, meaning they add up to 180 degrees. And so to try and really illustrate that, let me give each of these four interior angles a name. And I won't be particularly original, I'll call this one A, the next one B, the next one C, and the next one D. And now that I've named each of the four angles, I can go ahead and state that because this quadrilateral is a cyclic quadrilateral, we must have a plus C, which equals to 180, as well as B plus D, since those are both pairs of opposite angles inside this cyclic quadrilateral. And I'll go ahead and write that on the side. We have A plus C, which equals to 180 degrees, and we have B plus D, which will also be equal to 180 degrees. There we go. That's the rule you need to remember. And in an attempt to make things super clear here, let me just add some arrows here. So A and C are opposite angles, and so are B and D. Okay, well that's the rule, or that's the circle theorem that you need to know about cyclic quadrilaterals and their opposite interior angles. So, now that we know it, let's go ahead and work through these two examples. For the first example, example one, we're given this cyclic quadrilateral and we need to find the two unknown angles A and B. Well, for this first example, all we have to do really is apply the rule that we just saw. In other words, we use the fact that because this is a cyclic quadrilateral, the opposite angles A and 106 have to add up to 180, and so do the opposite angles B and 75. And so right next to this circle, I can quickly write that A plus 106 has to equal the 180, and I can also write that B plus 75 has to equal to 180 as well. And all I need to do now is solve both of these equations. So in the top one here, we've got this 106, which is being added to A. And so to get rid of it, I'll subtract 106 from both sides of this equation. And that quickly leads us to the value of the angle A. A is equal to 180 minus 106, which is 74, and that's 74 degrees. And that's angle A done. For angle B, I solve this second equation. We have B plus 75 equals to 180. And so to solve it, I subtract 75 from both sides, which quickly leads to B equals to 180 minus 75, which is 105. And that's 105 degrees. And we're done. We've just found both of those unknown angles. Okay, let's look at this second example. Now this one's a little bit more complicated, and in fact, it involves more than just one circle theorem. We need to find the unknown angles A, B, and C. 
And looking at this whole thing, we can see that we do have a cyclic quadrilateral. Indeed, that's the one I'm hovering over right now. But we also have an angle at the center of the circle. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the theorem on the angle at the center and the angle at the circumference, then you may want to check that out now. In fact, you'll find a link towards my video on that theorem in this video's description below. But for now, I'm going to carry on solving this example, assuming that you're aware of that theorem. So, what I like to do when I see a problem like this one is make small sketches to break up the problem. Here's what I mean. First of all, I would draw a circle, something like that, in which I draw nothing but my cyclic quadrilateral. So I'll make something that roughly looks like my cyclic quadrilateral. I've got a point there, another one there, another one there, and one down here. So my cyclic quadrilateral looks something like this. And adding the two opposite interior angles of this cyclic quadrilateral, I can see right away that the angle C and the angle B will add up to 180. And in fact, I'll write that underneath. I have B plus C, which will equal to 180 degrees. And I'll even box that. There we go. Okay, now for the next sketch or diagram that I make, I actually have two options. And here they are. I'll write them at the very top right-hand corner here. I'll say option one. And I'll just quickly draw a circle. There we go. With the center right there. Both of the options I'm about to show you deal with the angle at the center theorem. What distinguishes them is which angle at the circumference we choose to use. And so I can either use this angle at the circumference, C, or I can use this one, B. And so let's say for option one, I use this angle here at the circumference. So that's angle C. In which case, the drawing I make would look something like this. I'd have a point there, another one here, and another point here. And so we're looking at something like this. There we go. And my angle C would be right there. Angle A is here, and 210 is right there. Okay, now this angle C at the circumference is subtended or formed by this arc. The angle at the center, which is formed by that same arc, is this angle here, A. And what the angle at the center theorem tells us is that the angle at the center is two times bigger than the angle at the circumference. In other words, A is equal to two times C, so two C. And now alongside this equation, we can see that we have the other angle at the center, this 210 degrees. And since all the angles at a point have to add up to 360 degrees, we can see quite clearly here that A plus 210 has to equal to 360. And subtracting 210 from both sides of that equation quickly leads us to A equals to 150 degrees. And that's our angle A found. Going back to this result which I found with the angle at the center theorem, I can now replace the A on the left hand side by 150 and then solve for C. So that would be 150 equals to 2C. And now dividing both sides of this equation by 2 leads us to 75 equals to C. In other words, C equals to 75. And that's the angle C. Finally, now that we know what angle C is, we can go back to the expression I boxed here, which I found using the cyclic quadrilaterals theorem, and I can replace the C that I have here by 75, which would lead to B plus 75 equals to 180. And now subtracting 75 from both sides of that equation leads to B equals to 180 minus 75, which is 105, and that's 105 degrees. And we're done. Using the cyclic quadrilateral theorem, as well as the angle at the center theorem, we've just found all three angles, A, B, and C. Now, as I said earlier on, we had two options for our angle at the center theorem. And so to finish this, let me quickly show you the second option we had, and I'll just write option two at the top here, option two. And again, I'll draw my circle, there we go, and I'll say the center is here. The second way we could have used the angle at the center theorem would have been by focusing on the other angle at the circumference. In other words, by focusing on this angle B. In which case, rather than having this diagram here, I would have drawn something like this. So I'd have this point at the top, I'd have this point right here, and this point right here. 
and so we'd have something like this. There we go. The angle A is right here, and the angle B is right there. And again, we know that this angle is 210 degrees. Now in this case, the angle at the circumference, angle B, is subtended or formed by this arc that I'm hovering over right now. Consequently, the angle at the center that we'll consider here is the angle at the center which is also subtended or formed by that same arc. So it's the 210 degree angle here. And using the angle at the center theorem, we can therefore state that the angle at the center, 210 degrees, is two times bigger than the angle at the circumference, B. So we could just write 210 is equal to 2B. So we could just write 210 is equal to 2B. Now dividing both sides of this equation by 2 leads us to 105 equals to B. In other words, B equals to 105 degrees which is exactly the same result as what we found with the first option. Indeed, we had found B equals to 105 degrees as well. And with this option, now that we have angle B, we would have gone back to the expression we had here using the cyclic quadrilateral theorem, but this time we would have replaced B by 105, which would then lead to an equation for C. And in fact, let's quickly do that up here. If I copy this expression, but I replace B by the result we just found, we get, and let me just draw a vertical line to separate things, we get 105 plus C equals to 180. We then subtract 105 from both sides of this equation, which leaves us with C equals to 180 minus 105, which is 75 degrees. And of course, that's the same answer for C that we had found previously. Indeed, we had found C equals to 75 degrees. Finally, to find the angle A, we would have used exactly the same rule as we did before. Remember, all the angles at a point have to add up to 360. So A plus 210 must equal to 360. And we had done that here and found that A equals to 150. So I don't need to write that again. And there we go. That's it for this video on circle theorems, and in particular, the cyclic quadrilateral theorem, which tells us that the opposite interior angles of a cyclic quadrilateral are supplementary, meaning they add up to 180 degrees. And that's it for this tutorial.